Math 142, this is section 12.1. We're going to talk about just a real quick introduction to limits. And uh, when you take your calculus class next, this is one of the first things that you're going to think about. And it's a good good tool for, uh, it's something that we need actually to, uh, to really formalize the ideas in calculus. So limits are basically, um, they're about a neighborhood. They're about something that happens around a point. Let me give you a couple examples. Uh, X plus 1 over 5. Um, I'm going to let x get really close to, to 4. So as x gets really close to 4, what does this thing seem to do? Now it's interesting, if you plug 4 into it, 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 divided by 5 is 1. So when x equals 4, this thing is 1. Um, and that's great, that's good to know, but really I'm not really concerned about what happens when at the actual value uh, right now, when I'm talking about a limit, I'm talking about what happens in the neighborhood. So I'm going to bring up Desmos and, and just get a graph of this. And I'm going to do a little quick sketch of it just, just to make a point. All right. And there is a graph of it. And now here's where x is 4, right here. And now what I want to think about is I'm not really concerned about the actual point. If I just kind of cover that up, notice as x is getting closer and closer to 4 from the left side, and as x is getting closer and closer to 4 from the right side, like I'm squeezing in onto that 4, right? The y value, here it's getting closer and closer, here it's getting closer and closer, right? Like I'm going like, whoa, whoa, and it's squeezing in towards that 1. And as I zoom into this and look closer and closer, I can tell it's getting closer and closer to 1 as I get closer and closer to it. Notice I know the value is 1 there, but when I'm talking about limits, I'm talking about what's not, it's going, what, not what's going on at the point, but what's going on in the neighborhood. So here's some, here's some notation for us. When I say uh, the limit, what, what goes on as x gets really close to 4, here's how I'd write it. Uh, the limit as x approaches 4 of this function. So in other words, what happens as I get closer and closer to 4? What, what does this become? And in this case, we can see it's 1 pretty, pretty apparently. Let's, let's take a look at, it, at another function and see if we can hash out this idea a little bit more. Because I, I, like thinking about it this way, it... It's kind of, it feels kind of dumb, to be honest with you. Um, wow, look at me being honest with you. Limit as x, divide, uh, as x approaches 7, x squared minus 6x minus 7 over x minus 7. So again, notice what this is saying. As x gets closer and closer to 7, what happens to this thing? And what's interesting to me about this is if I just plug 7 in, I'm dividing by 0. So actually, like, I have no idea. Like, what could it be? We could think about this in two different ways. One is I could graph this in Desmos. But before I do the, the graph of it, I'm going to look at it uh, numerically. I'm going to look at it kind of as a table. Let me patch this up, get me back into function mode. And I'll get this function on here. And let me look at a table. Oh, I'm going to do table set. I'm going to, I'm going to change it so it will ask me for inputs. So, table. So, 7. If I try to plug 7 in there, I get an error because I'm dividing by 0. So, let's get closer and closer to zero to 7 from below, from the left-hand side. So, what if I did 6.5? Okay, what if I did 6.6? .6? Uh, how about 6? Let's stop screwing around. 6.9. Ooh, 6.99. Oh, interesting. This seems to be getting closer and closer to 8. So notice as I, as I approach 7 from below, from the left-hand side of it, this thing seems to be getting closer to 8. 
And, and what I just did was I took the limit as x approached 7 from the negative side, from the left-hand side. And it was of that. And it looked like it was headed towards 8. Let me do it from above, right? So in other words, I'm squeezing it from below and getting as I'm squeezing towards 7, and the output seems to be squeezing towards 8. So let me go from, a, from above instead. So I'm, I'm past 7, so 7.1, say, or 7.01. That's even closer, right? Or 7.001. See, I'm getting closer and closer to 7 from the positive side, from above it. And it seems to be squeezing it on 8 as well. So the other thing I could say is uh, the limit as x approaches 7 from the positive side, that's what that notation means, of that function, I'm just not rewriting it, is also 8. So it seems, it seems to squeeze to 8 from below right, and from above. So that's sufficient evidence, I think, for me to say this limit is 8. So as x gets really close to 7, this thing gets really close to 8. It's not equal to 8, right? It's, it's not equal to anything because I can't divide by 0. But it, it gets closer and closer to 8. It's kind of interesting. Uh, it's actually very interesting to me that we can... You can kind of do that, do that sort of thinking. So let's get a graph of this and see what's happening. And I was squeezing in at five, six, seven. So here's seven. Oh look, there's a hole in this graph there. So as I approach seven from the negative side, it gets closer and closer to eight. As I approach it from the positive side, it gets closer and closer to 8. But when I'm actually there, it's undefined. So again, I'm not concerned about what happens at that point. I'm concerned about the neighborhood. And if it squeezes to the same value from below, that's what this notation means, and from above, that's what this notation means, then I have the limit. The limit is defined. Um, I want to add one little thing notation-wise just to make a, a really clear distinction here. I'm just going to put that up here, and I'm going to name it f of x. So that's my function. And I could take the limit as x approaches 7 of the function, and I know that it, the answer is 8. And here's the reason why I'm doing that, because that's true, but f of 7 is undefined. Again, these are saying two very, very different things. This is saying the neighborhood. In other words, as I get close to 7, this thing seems to get closer and closer to 8. It seems to spit out answers that are closer and closer to 8. This is very specific. Specific spot. This is saying, though, if I plug 7 into this, it's undefined. There's no answer. Right? What happens around the point 7 when x is 7? What happens when x is 7? These are, these are different things. So let's take a look at um, one more thing I just want to point out. I'm just going to go back to that first thing that we did. We said uh, the limit as x approaches 4 of x plus 1 over 5. In this function, if we can plug that 4 in and it just gives us the, that answer, that is the limit. It's both the spot and the limit. The spot exists. It still tends towards it. Now, that's not always the case. Let's take a look at a couple of graphs. So here's a graph right here. There's a lot going on. This whole thing is a function that we're going to call f. Uh, and writing the rule for that would be, would be weird. Uh, let's go ahead and try and, uh, try and write something. So how about the limit? as x approaches 4 of the function. So x is approaching 4. So if we go this way and we go that way, it squeezes on to, well, it happens to be the same value, but that's just because it's at the height, 4. But notice if I say, what is f of 4? In other words, if I input 4 into this function, boom, there's a hole there, undefined. All right, let's look at another one. How about the limit? Um, 
of this function as x approaches 2. Well, let's see. Here's where x is 2, and it makes a jump here. So two things are going on. I could say the limit as x approaches 2 from the left-hand side, from the negative side of it, notice that what this does is that approaches negative 2. That output becomes negative 2. Uh, but if I go over the other direction, if I approach that same value 2 from the right-hand side, from this side, the y, the y value is 0. Notice how these diverge. If these diverge, like this is a left-handed function limit, this is a right-handed limit, uh, if they don't match, then the, the general limit itself does not exist. We can say it does not exist. So that is that whole idea of these. Let me take one more peek at another set of functions that I have here. Uh, let's just call this function, just to mix it up a little, Call it. let's just call this one g. Um, Okay, a couple things. How about uh, the limit as x approaches 6 of g? And what is g of 6? And what is the limit as x approaches negative 1 of this function? And one more, what is the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the positive side? Of this function. All right, how about this one? The limit as x approaches 6 of the function. So here's 6, so we're squeezing in on 6 from both sides. Squeezing this way, squeezing this way, they both seem to converge to 2. So I'd say it's 2. But g of 6, when I plug 6 into this function, the actual point is up here at 3. Right? The thing that actually happens at that point is 3. But the neighborhood all says it's tending towards 2. Neighborhood, actual value. Uh, the limit as x approaches negative 1 of this thing. So as we squeeze in towards negative 1, if we go from this side, uh, we head towards 1. If we go from the positive side, we head towards 3. So that's 3. These diverge. They don't head towards... The neighborhood disagrees. If you go from this side you end up here, but if you go from this side, you end up there. So the general limit does not exist, but the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit uh, do does exist. So on graphs, there's that. I want to do one more with the table. Let's go ahead and do one more table about uh, the limit as x approaches 5. All right, if I just plug it in, I divide by 0, so got a problem there. So let's see, I'm going to approach 5 from above and below. So I'll get, get my function in here. Okay, there it is. Let me look at my table. I'll clear out the, all those values. Okay, so I'll approach 5 from below. So 4.9, uh, 4 4.99, 4.9999, 4.9999. 4 Seems to be going to 75. Uh, if I go from the other side, let's see, 5.0001, that's super close. That's just past 75, right? And I'm just going to make a point here. That's a little further away from 5. It's a little further away from 5. So notice as I squeeze in this way towards 5, this getting just below 75. As I squeeze in this way towards 5, this is getting just above 75. So that's pretty darn good evidence that this limit is 75. All right, that is uh, that idea. And you could do it with, with if there's sine in there, if there's a uh, cosine. All sorts of things. You can just shove it in your table and see what's going on. Give those limit problems practice. Give them a good try. Message me with any questions you have. And hey, nice job. You just watched the last lecture for this course. So uh, really good work. Thanks for sticking with me.